Hi, everybody. Take a look at this important point Douglas Murray makes on Elon Levy's new podcast about the obsession with Israel, the feverish rage that accompanies those who are hostile to Israel. Have a listen. Why are they so feverish about Israel? Um, I did a very unpleasant sum some years ago, a few years into the Syrian civil war, which was if you add up all of the people killed on both sides of every conflict involving Israel from 1948, including the War of Independence, right up to the present, and you include the highest estimated death tolls on not just the side of Israel, but on the side of Egypt, Jordan, everyone else, you get an average six months killing in Syria over the last decade. Astonishing. Right. So why would it be that if you are a Pakistani Muslim in London, you didn't turn out one Saturday for the killing of your co-religionists by Bashar al-Assad? You didn't spend one weekend outside the Chinese embassy for the putting into concentration camps of one million Muslims in China. You didn't turn out in massacre after massacre, in country after country. But this country, Israel, does one thing, never mind a war, one thing, and the streets erupt. Why? Muslim anti-Semitism is one of the variants of anti-Semitism and is the most prevalent and pushing in our time. And it terrifies the leaders of Western democracies because they have brought this into the West and they don't know what to do about it. I can understand to some extent. By the way, it's important that, as he say, he talks about those numbers. If someone says, yeah, well, Israel's acting worse than uh, these countries. No, they are. The amount of people that have died in the conflict since 48 pales in comparison to those who have killed, been killed even recently in other conflicts throughout the Middle East, civil war in Yemen, in Syria, Sudan, Iraq. But no, it's, it's evil Israel who are going after Hamas terrorists when they face the worst massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. And they are having more military precision than has ever been seen before in the history of urban warfare in terms of targeting Hamas terrorists. It's so clearly hostility towards um, the Jewish state, towards Jews. Um, and the reason is because it comes from an Islamist view that says that Islam has to dominate the world. It supersedes Judaism. And therefore, how, if you believe that, how do you make sense of the fact that the Jewish people have been returned to their homeland? You, you say... God has forsaken the Jews, and now it's Islam's job and role, and we have the divine relationship, exclusive divine relationship with God, and he's forsaken the Jews. Suddenly the Jewish people return to their land. It's basically such a thorn in their backside because it's saying God never forsook the Jewish people. They had a job to do in exile, now they're returning. And as he promised in the Torah, he would return them back to their land. The land would be rejuvenated, it would blossom, and they would rebuild their cities and towns. And of course... The only way you can make sense of that in their heads is to say, well, this is just an evil that needs to be destroyed. But of course, that's going to be something that they're need, going to need to change. They're going to need to grow up and acknowledge some basic truths that God designated and assigned this land to the Jewish people. It says so not just in the Torah, but also in the Quran. But even if it didn't say it in the Quran, this is a divine fact and it is something that they should actually and they will come to celebrate because he has god has a specific role and relationship with the jewish people but he has a specific role for every single nation and everyone can come together in serving god in their own unique way um but the path of uh, death and conquest that um the extremists seem to be celebrating and the path of opposition to to the jews and to israel will never end well for them, for those who go about that approach. I'm Ollie Annisfeld and you're watching JTV.